Welcome back. It is December 14th, and we are about to head into Luke chapter 14 in our journey through the Gospel according to Luke for December chapter 1 through 24 as we go from December 1st through December 24th on our way to Christmas. Just a quick reminder of where we left off. Uh, Jesus is heading toward Jerusalem now, and he's starting to feel the weight of his calling, of his mission, which is to offer himself for the sin of the world. <clears throat> and um, in the last two chapters of, last two verses of chapter 13, we have him lamenting over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her, her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. See that your house is left to you desolate, and surely I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that's what they would cry as he entered into Jerusalem, which we will get to eventually on his way to the cross. And we looked last time at how blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord was, a, was an allusion to Psalm 118, where we find the following verses talk about the sacrifice being bound to the horns of the altar. And um, he's going to be the sacrifice for our sin very soon. <clears throat> Which brings us to chapter 14. So let's pray and we'll get right into it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this precious time, Lord, that you've set aside that we can sit before your word. We can contemplate our Savior, Jesus Christ, all he did for us, all he has promised to do yet. And so, Lord, I pray that you would stir up in us, Lord, a zeal and a desire and a hunger for more of you as we look in your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Luke chapter 14. Now it happened as he went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath, that they watched him closely. And behold, there was a certain man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus, answering, spoke to the lawyers and the Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they kept silent. And he took him and healed him and let him go. Then he answered them, saying, Which of you, having a donkey or an ox that has fallen into a pit, will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him regarding these things. So he told a parable to those who were invited, when he noted how they chose the best places, saying to them, <clears throat> When you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more honorable than you be invited by him. And he who invited you and him come and say to you, Give place to this man, and then you begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down in the lowest place, so that when he who invited you comes, he may say to you, Friend, go up higher. Then you will have glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he also said to him who invited him, When you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because you can, they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just." Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I've bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. <clears throat> and another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, 
I've married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you, that none of those men who are invited shall taste my supper. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest, after he has laid the foundation, and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him. Saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with ten thousand to meet him who comes against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. It's the word of God. Well, look at this beautiful chapter. It's dinner time with Jesus here. He's been invited to a Pharisee's house on the Sabbath to have dinner. Well, actually, it's a trap. It's a trap because they want to see what he's going to do on the Sabbath day. They're withholding, they're, they're upholding their religious observance on the Sabbath day, believing this is what gains them merit and favor before God. Jesus heals a man who's paralyzed in some way, and um, and they're, they're critical of him for doing it, and he turns it back around on them. He says, if you had an animal that was in trouble on the Sabbath day, you would you would help it, and yet you don't even have the love and the mercy to help this poor man. Then he talks about taking a place at a dinner. He's talking about humility here, humbling yourself. You can humble yourself. You don't have to wait for God to do the humbling for you, which he will do as he seeks to transform us into the image of his son. But instead, he says, humble yourself. Take the lowly seat. You've been invited to the master's table. Jesus is calling you to salvation. This is a reason to be humble, not to be proud. Humble yourself and then let him lift you up into higher positions of responsibility and authority in his kingdom. He talks about calling of a great supper. He's the one calling the supper, isn't he? He's laid the table. All things are ready. He's come. And he's inviting his people to that supper, to dine with him, to join with him, to enter into relationship with him. And yet they come up with excuses in his parable. One has a piece of ground that he must go and see, his material possessions. Another has bought five yoke of oxen and he needs to test them. This is this is their his occupation or his way of making money, his work. And then another says that uh, he's just been married. Um, where is that? Yeah, he's just taken a wife and therefore he cannot come. His relationship, his relationship is keeping him from Jesus. Material position, possessions, your work or your position, your relationships, all of these things can keep you from entering into relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what was going on with the people that he was calling to himself in his day. It's what's going on with the people he's calling to himself now. And instead he goes and he goes into the highways and the byways and, and gathers up the humble people, 
people who don't have a place to go, don't have those possessions or positions or those wonderful intimate relationships. He calls them to himself. And that's always the people that are coming to Jesus, the humble. And then he talks about leaving all to follow him. He talks about counting the cost again, doesn't he? He talks about counting the cost. And if you're going to follow him, then make sure you understand. He's calling for a complete devotion. Your devotion to him, your love for him, has to make your love for your family relationships seem like hate in comparison to your complete devotion to him. And then the parable of the salt. If salt has lost its flavor, how can it be seasoned? What is it good for? It's good for nothing. What is it about salt? It's its flavor. What is it about a Christian? It's their zeal and devotion for Jesus Christ. If you've lost this, then you're good for nothing and you'll be tossed out as, uh, as useless by him. Beautiful teaching. Again, Jesus, the master teacher here, using dinner time to teach us. Brilliant. Well, thanks for joining me again today for the 14th chapter of Luke. Join me again tomorrow for Luke chapter 15. Till then, be well and God bless you.